Hey guys, Jim here. Welcome back once again. I'm going to do a very short video here because there's not a lot to talk about except for some very, very minor changes uh, from the original version to this newest. Uh, but what I want to do is I want to refer you back. I'm going to put a link down in the description uh, of the previous video that I did of the Michael Zeba MS3. This has been a really, really popular model for him. Over the past couple of years, he's done a couple different iterations. Uh, one in M390, one in AEBL, one in uh, 20 CV, and now we're going to take a look at something ever so slightly different. And this one is going to be the MS3 in gorgeous, beautiful Dama steel. And that really is the main difference, except for the fact we're going to roll them over this way because the clips like to keep it from sitting upright. So there's a very, very slight size difference in the overall size and in the handle size. You'll notice that the newest version, look at the handle length here versus here, uh, just a tiny bit smaller and the uh, blade length of course would be uh, shorter as well. And the only other major difference is going to be the fact that the originals had the jimped titanium backspacer and this one is going to be a matte diskin carbon fiber backspacer and that's going to be one of the biggest visual differences when the knife is closed you'll see that and immediately know this is one of these rarer special editions and when I say rarer I mean the fact that he's only going to be making a handful of these I think it's like a dozen or less available in the Damasteel versions he didn't have a lot of damage steel left to work with to make these, uh, so it's going to be a very, very rare little bird. Now, if you want to get your hands on one, the uh, way to do it is to go to Michael Zeba's website. That will also be in the description below. And then uh, any that he has remaining uh, after he sells out on his website would go to places like Knife Center, DLT Trading, and Ford Henry Custom Knives. Those are pretty much his three biggest dealers, his highest volume dealers. And uh, they treat him very well. He likes to treat them very well, make special editions for them, and give them access to things that he doesn't normally offer to dealers. Now, for those that are unfamiliar with Dama Steel, uh, basically what you're looking at is the highest grade of today's modern Damascus. And the thing is, when you look at today's modern Damascus, it's pattern welded in steels. So you're taking uh, a couple of different steels, and you're going to stack them, and they're going to be forged together, you're going to beat them down, you're going to twist them, fold them, all the different things that are done to make the patterns, but you're taking these various different bars of steel and you're compressing them together and making a bond. And while today's Damascus is very, very good, um, there can be some issues where you'll get cold shots, you'll have delamination, you'll have issues where those layers want to split or have little gaps in them. And Dama Steel eliminates that. What they're doing is they're using their uh, PM steel, their powder metallurgy steel, they're actually making the billet of Damascus as one solid piece. There, There is no way for it to delaminate because when they're done with their process, it is one bar of steel. It is not a combination of a couple different bars of steel to make the billet. And I, I'm sure there's a much easier way to explain that than the way that I'm saying, uh, but they are using the PM process in order to make that bar. So they're using their RWL34, they're using these very, very high grade stainless steels. And that's the other thing too, these are always stainless steels. And because they're PM steels, they're micro clean, which means the carbides are so tiny that it will take a much finer edge than many other steels that are available, whether it be a, a high grade mono steel or another type of Damascus. So you're getting stainless steels, you're getting a bar that is free of any possible imperfections. And then once they've got that, then they do their twisting, then they do their flipping, then they do their folding and do the forging to create the patterns that they're creating. So it's, it's a unique process. It is a patented process, by the way, for those that don't know. Um, you can't just uh, do what they're doing and you can't use the name Damasteel. That is their registered uh, trademark. So don't get confused if somebody calls a standard Damascus knife Damasteel. Damasteel is its own thing. And the way that you'll see Dama Steel typically presented is like this, mirror polished and then etched, uh, etched in the acid to, to uh, show the contrast in the patterns. 
and uh, that's the one downside to Dama Steel as a knife maker. Um, I've made quite a few knives now in Dama Steel and, and many, many, many in various different stainless and carbon steels. And you have to spend more time with Dama Steel. That's just the way it is. It needs to be a flawless mirror finish before you go to put it in the muriatic acid because if you don't you're gonna see the grind lines you're gonna see any little scratches even if it's a super high satin let's say you did a you know a 1500 2000 grit hand rub satin you're gonna see lines through it and what it's also going to do that's uh, unsightly is the the pattern itself won't be crisp it'll be kind of almost like it's smudged or smeared in some way so it does have to be a perfectly flawless mirror and then you can uh, then etch it for the contrast to get the, the beauty of the Damascus steel. But, you know, at that point you're using the best type of Damascus that you possibly can. It's going to take a phenomenal edge. They're very, very chip resistant, very, very corrosion resistant. Um, it's just overall a fantastic steel to use. It is more expensive than many other Damascus billets that you may price out if you're a knife maker. Um, so realize this when you're going from a knife. This was uh, M390, I believe, on this one. The price jump from a knife in a standard mono steel to Damascus is usually fairly significant. And then above that, usually going into Dama steel, it's going to be a little bit more because the billet itself is more expensive and more time, more of the labor has to go into it in order to make it look right. And yeah, there are people that have taken shortcuts and bead blasted it and stuff like that. And I don't, I don't want to say they're taking shortcuts. They're, they're usually makers that have done it uh, the proper way, and they're just looking for different ways to finish it. So I want to correct my, uh, my thinking there. There are different ways of doing it, but really the proper presentation is going to be a, uh, a mirror polish. Now I want to give you a quick size comparison, and you've already seen the size comparison to the original MS3, so let's put it out here against a couple of other Zeba models. Here we have the, uh, the S7, which for some reason I couldn't flip properly. So there's the S7, and it is just a hair shorter than the S7, and then we have one of the more popular models that everybody seems to know uh, is the S5. This is one of Mike's uh, full-size knives, big, bad, bold, very hefty, you feel it in the hand. The S7 is considered to be a very small knife uh, for Mike. Fantastic, great little EDC knife, but what you've got here, I don't look at as an EDC knife, I look at pretty much the same thing as having a gentleman's folder. Uh, yes, it does have a pocket clip that doesn't make it a strict gentleman's folder, but this is great for those times you just want to drop something in your pocket, or you're wearing, let's say you're wearing dress pants that are thinner uh, than having jeans on, or you're wearing lightweight shorts, maybe even running shorts. This is something you, you can clip inside the pocket. There's almost no weight to it. <clears throat> There's almost no size in any direction. It's not going to be cumbersome in any way, and I think that's why the MS3 has been so incredibly popular. Uh, because it is a very easy knife to carry in any, doesn't matter how you're dressed, doesn't matter where you're going, very, very, very easy knife to carry. And this one is going to be even just a hair easier because of the uh, slightly smaller size to it. So if you've been looking at the MS3 going, man, this is an absolutely awesome knife. I really want to get one. I'm just not a fan of just having, you know, the, the bead blasted finish. There you go, baby. There is your dressier model in the dam of steel there's not going to be a lot available again you can go to michael ziba's website directly to pick it up after that you'll be looking for them at uh, knife center dlt trading as well as uh, fort henry custom knives that's all i've got to really say about this again the difference is just the size uh, the dam of steel blade material and the matte disc and carbon fiber for the backspacer and uh, that's pretty much the same knife the packaging is going to be the same the nice ziba pouch with your signed certificate with the uh, hologram and there it details what you're getting MS3, Dam of Steel, uh, ta -ta -ta titanium plus carbon fiber pro EDC finish which is his, uh, his vapor blasted finish there and then the build date you get Michael's business card and a nice microfiber cloth so pretty much the same thing we expected from the other versions now also in the damage steel if you have any questions please put them down below and uh i will do my best to answer them and if i don't know the answer i'll call mike and find out for you anyway guys i'll see you on the next video